Howdy folks, Nathan here with a 2024 Buick Encore GX ST. It's the mid rank amongst the brand new Buicks. And by brand new, I mean, they've been lightly updated and I'm gonna take you around the vehicle. We're gonna look at what's been updated and we're gonna talk about the three trims that are out there. And in addition, we're gonna take it for a little drive. So without any further delay, here we go. This one is the ST, which is kind of sporty touring type thing, kind of, sort of. And by doing that, what they did was they added a little bit of street cred to it by giving it black wheels. Yeah, black wheels mean street. Actually, they're not horrible looking. I'm not a big fan of painted black wheels on many vehicles, but these aren't too bad. Um, now, there are 19 inch wheels, and you may be wondering, well, Nathan, how can I get larger wheels? Ah, well, you'd probably have to go up a trim, and we'll talk about that later. So let's talk about what this vehicle is. This is a 1.3 liter, three cylinder turbocharged engine that puts out 155 horsepower and 174 pound feet of torque, hooked up to a nine speed automatic transmission, and it's all wheel drive. The reason why that's significant is because you can get a lesser turbocharged engine, a 1.2 liter, it puts out less horsepower, and that comes with a CVT front wheel drive. You can also get this engine, the 1.3 CVT front wheel drive, but if you opt to get this with all wheel drive, then you get the nine speed automatic transmission, which I think is the way to go. It's a personal thing there. So, a couple new things here. Why don't you come up front, because you're going to love this. For you guys who are absolutely into Buick's history, three shields. One, two, three, right there. That's new. Yeah. Buick is bringing back some of its past in terms of some of the little decor they're throwing on the vehicles, and that is part of it. Now, because it's the ST, they did black out the grill, give you a little bit more macho look. And then, in addition, because this is an updated 2024 model, the headlights and front fascia have gone through some changes and the same in the back and let's have a look-see over there. Now, you may be wondering, what about the regular Buick Encore? Well, that's gone. This is now their entry level model and that's not a bad thing. Now here's the rear. You may have noticed there's a couple changes with the lights in some of the rear section here, but really not a whole lot. In case that 174 pound-feet of torque tears through your neighborhood, you do have these little things here to help stabilize you as you are flying around doing a rally stage. I'm kidding, of course. The Buick setup here, this is all new. Once again, three shields. Good stuff, right? Let's pop up in the trunk real quick because I wanted to show you something I think is actually kind of cool. First of all, decent amount of space, but one thing you don't see very much of it anymore. Ta da! Spare tire. Not only that, but look at the space you get in here. There is a lot of extra room. So if you're Roman and you need a lot of hair product, there is space for it right there. In addition, seats do fold fairly flat. And I wanted to show you guys how I fit behind myself. This is a small vehicle. This is now the smallest one in the lineup that they have currently. And as such, well, the question is, is there room? Now I'm six foot one and I'm going to sit behind myself. Here we go. You have to do a little bit of physical Jenga to make it happen, but I can fit. But let me tell you, if I were six foot two in the front, <laughs> I wouldn't have much room in the back. Just enough room for me to get in here. Probably best for kids back here or for smaller human beings. Something else I wanted to show you. Now, I know this is kind of weird, but I kind of dig this. We put these extra drinks in this door panel. It actually easily holds a can of soda and a little bottle of water. It's a really big thing in the rear passenger door. You don't see that very often. All right, I'm gonna hop out of here. This is gonna be not very graceful or dignified. All right. Now, what about the front? Well, why don't we sit in the inside and have a look-see because there's a couple things I want to show you, including an 11 inch screen. Let 
I'm so glad it beeped to remind me of for nothing. Maybe because the key is in the car. Okay, look at that. Three shields, three shields. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Let's fire this puppy up. So this is an eight inch screen in front of you, by the way. Notice how this is all a paint of black. Mercedes Benz actually ripped this off. I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> this is kind of the way everybody's going, right? Less knobs, less buttons, more screens. Let me show you. If I turn the engine on, there we go. All right, so that is not a bad looking screen at all in front of the driver. And yeah, I don't, I don't want to start playing with too many buttons, but let me see here. You can mess with it. Yeah, I mean, there'll be alerts that come up here and then you can change things and then, you know, move this around, which is nice. And then Bluetooth, of course, which we haven't set up yet because if we did, I'd definitely be playing something loud and violent. This screen here is actually very interesting. It's a full touch screen, 11 inches, as I said before. And the layout, I think is actually quite nice. Here's the cool part. Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, both wireless available. And yes, typical GM, there is a hotspot. Um, let's move to no device found. Yeah, that's because once again, I didn't do anything to hook it up. Okay, so how about we take a ride? And turn on the fan so we don't melt. We are, by the way, in Ann Arbor, Michigan. And General Motors was kind enough to bring us out here. Amid fire season, <laughs> all the haze you see up there is all from the fire in Canada. So thank you, Canada. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm sorry you guys have to deal with that. Um, and, but the good news is, um, because of that, even though it's really hazy, I don't really think it's going to rain very much. And because this vehicle is a refresh as opposed to being brand new, and I'm going to show you the brand new vehicle when we're done with this, just a little glimpse, I can tell you about how it drives. Now, I've driven the Buick um, Encore GX before, and I said it was good, and I still think it is. For one thing, this little turbo, here we go. It's got a lot of oomph, and I like the way the nine-speed responds. It snaps off gear changes quickly. There are two things, and only two things that I've not liked about the previous one, and I'm pretty sure this ST is similar to it, and that is for a Buick, there's a little bit more road noise than I would like. It's not bad, but it's definitely there. And then in addition, it actually has a fairly stiff ride. It's the sports version of this, and I'm pretty sure that the Avenir, which is the top of the line model, may have a softer suspension. I would recommend that because a lot of the people who drive this are probably in the same age group as Roman, where they're doing Geritol and AARP meetings. For most of you guys though, I will say this, maneuverability, excellent. Being able to actually see things on the road, really good sight lines. The packaging is very tight and very well done. I love the interior setup. There's just enough touch of class here to offset what would be a very boring drab interior. Thank God they put in this white material to offset a sea of black, right? Um, there's nice spongy material pretty much everywhere. So I'm actually able to feel things that aren't too terribly uncomfortable. And in addition, one final thing, it's got this really good panoramic roof. I like this. It's really nice in a little car, right? So it's kind of frisky and fun, but it's definitely not one of those things you would get instead of an Audi. Now, with that being said, I do want to show you real quick one final thing, and I'll be able to tell you the best part about this car once I hop out. First of all, have a look out the window. That is the Invista, baby. And that's right. And we will be doing a full review of that vehicle as well, including walk-arounds and whatnot. Ah, look, a red one. In fact, that's the ST, just like this, but larger. Yeah, actually, there are some things that they share, but 
I really do like the fact that Buick is still around. They're no longer a car company. They only build crossovers. But they're building a car that I think is, at least from the outside, pretty decent quality. And I've been doing some research on Buick. I've had no choice because my sister's a Buick person. And she's looking at actually getting one of these. So I've had no choice but to research it. And I can tell you that actually the reliability and all the numbers seem to be pretty damn good so far. So, thus far, not bad. But let's hop out. I want to tell you one more thing, and it's the best part of this car. Yeah. Ah, nice and smoky. For those of you who have just recently quit smoking, I highly recommend coming out to Detroit. <laughs> You'll feel like you're right back in the smoking den. Whoa, you can really taste it. So what's the best part about this car? This one, as you see, equipped, starts at $28,000. They may sound like a lot of money for some entry-level vehicles, but remember, this is a Buick. So you've got all of that tech. You've got high-end safety tech. You have what I consider to be a very strong little engine, and you got a vehicle that is averaging in the high 20s for MPG. That is all pretty damn good. Price, economy, and overall packaging. Not a bad start. This is Nathan. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you next time.